Well, I promised uh, within a few days I'd have a final video of this system. Um, really came out clean. Lots of wiring uh, with this one. I'll walk a little bit through it. Uh, I did a previous video discussing this system when we first started on it, but uh, what we have here is a combi Navian boiler. Um, all the essential components that are standard as far as air separation, expansion tank will come right off of this point here. Um, we have a magnetic filter on this system as well. Um, this has two circulator pumps, but we actually have um, one, two, three, four, five zones. So we'll start over at the furthest end here. You'll see that we have a mixing valve. Um, that's what's going to be knocking down the temperature from the high temp zones, which are over here, but we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so this is going to reduce the temperature supply feeding this zone to whatever this is set to. So this is currently set to, I think about 115, but we'll adjust that as needed for an in-floor radiant application. So typically it's about a maximum of 125 if you're dealing with something like concrete floors. Um, but depending on whether it's a staple up system from under, underneath the subfloor, you could play with that temperature a little bit. But regardless, the reason for that mixing valve is because this high temp zone is gonna be pushing 100, up to 180 degrees, which we certainly don't wanna be uh, feeding into this radiant supply. So uh, you can see here there's a single variable speed circulator, uh, Taco OOE series. These are the VT2218 variable speed Delta T circs. Um, and that's feeding two zone valves that are going to split to two manifolds. Now, um, you might wonder why there's a single circulator feeding two zones and why sometimes we do zone valves versus circulators. Well, this radiant uh, zone one and two are feeding very small manifolds. One of them only has two loops on it and the other one has four. So um, this circulator is more than enough to be able to handle um, those two zones. So in this case, we did a variable speed circ with the zone valves, which is really nice. I've talked a lot about these variable speed um, delta T pumps. They could adjust according to whatever setting you put on there for delta T. So if you want a 20 degree difference going into your floor versus coming out, it's going to maintain that temperature. That works really, really well for things like zone valves because as one zone valve opens um, and another one opens at a second time, you're also going to be bringing cold water in. It could adjust to make up for it. Um, and vary its speed depending on what's going on with those valves and the heat load. Um, so then we'll come over here to the high temp zone. So this is, as we said, we're going to be feeding in, um, depending on outside temperature, this boiler is going to be able to vary its temperature up and down, but maximum we'd ever be pushing in here would be no more than probably 170, but capable of 180. Um, so you'll see here, this first zone here is actually going to be feeding its splits, but it's a single zone. It's going to be feeding two radiators up on a loft, um, but still controlled by one thermostat. And then we're splitting off that and going into two separate zones. And you'll see that there's some aquastats mounted right to the supply pipes here. So what this is, is actually for towel warmers, hydronic towel warmers in um, two different bathrooms. So how this works is we've set these aquastats on here, which is basically just a temperature sensor and it's strapped right to the pipe I don't know if I can get a good shot under here. Um, I use these hose clamps because it gives a really good grip on here. These come with a pretty weak bracket and I don't like them. So I, I, I use these heavy duty um, pipe clamps and it basically what it does is clamp onto that pipe and uh, ensures that the heat sensor is touching the pipe directly. So we could set these aquastats to whatever temperature we want. So what's going to happen is we're going to be, when this towel warmer needs to be heated, um, this aquastat is set to a specific temperature to always maintain a minimum temperature of whatever we set this to. So if I want it to be the towel warmer to be 150 degrees, I'll set this for 150. And then you could actually also set a the difference that you want it to um, work its way down to before to maintain that differential. So in this case, I have these set, for example, to 150 when it hits 150 degrees, even though we're feeding it 180 degrees, that just means you're feeding 180 degrees in here, but as soon as this pipe gets 150 degrees, it's gonna shut off the this zone valve, and it's gonna 
begin cooling down over a period of time, and I have it set for a 20 degree differential. So it's gonna drop, when it drops 20 degrees, it's going to close the contact once again in here, and it's going to turn, open this zone valve and feed it again 180 degree water till the pipe gets back up to 150. So we're basically just maintaining a 130 to 150 degree temperature. Now those are just example numbers. This will be tuned in, if you will, um, for their specific needs. Now you don't want the towel warmer so hot you're gonna scald somebody. So I actually have it set for about 120. Uh, so that'll maintain this anywhere from 100 degrees to 120 degrees. But if the towels are not warm enough, they could adjust that temperature accordingly. Now it gets a little tricky because you do have to be kind of aware of what else is going on. So this boiler, if you're using outdoor reset, which is meaning if you're using the outdoor temperature sensor and this boiler is going to be adjusting its temperature depending on the outside temperature, you gotta be careful that you set this aquastat so that it, if it's too high, and say I set it for 150 and the boiler is only giving 120 degree water because it's a little warmer outside, and that's what this the outdoor sensor is telling it to do. Um, we're just going to be running this zone constantly, 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 burning this boiler constantly. So you don't want that. So I actually have it set right here to 120, which is pretty much a safeguard for if they do enable outdoor reset. This boiler at a minimum would put out about 130, so it will always at least be outputting even on the warmest day, above what that's set for. So um, if they want to disable the outdoor reset, then we could play with those temperatures and raise them up a little bit. But you just have to be aware of those things. There's a lot going on. Um, so yeah, with all the wiring and everything, you can see I sort of just keep it all clean, zip tie everything nice uh, to all of the, usually what I do is I zip tie them all to um, these supports here. And then I zip tie everything together, just keep it real clean. Um, so right here is another switch that I don't think I covered yet. And what this is doing is the customer also wanted to be able to have control over those towel heaters. Because as I said, it's essentially just going to be maintaining a constant temperature all the time. And in the event that they go away for a vacation or even if um, they're just not utilizing one in a bathroom for a certain amount of days or long periods They could actually individually shut off each towel heater. So what I did was I ran the um, Wiring that would tell the zone controller To turn the pump on and open the zone valve. I ran that through a switch here So that we could kill that so that the zone controller just never gets the call for heat um, regardless because that aquastat will be either the contact could be closed uh, depending on its, the pipe's temperature, which would want to tell the controller to, to fire the boiler and turn the pumps on. But we could just individually turn them on and off as needed. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, this one was a pretty fun one. I really like these. Um, yeah, I consider them a challenge because you got to, uh, it's just different than the norm. It's, it all works the same. It's, uh, we use aquastats all the time for indirect water heaters, for heating um, tanks of water with boilers. So all these components are standard components we would use, and you're just putting them in a different configuration. Um, we also have all these purge valves for individually bleeding and purging air out of all of the, the zones. So that's another uh, nice add-on to have. So yeah, um, if you guys got questions about boiler systems or want to see other videos, I have tons of other videos on the channel, lots of videos about other things building houses uh we do a lot of stuff so um subscribe if you haven't yet lots of videos still to come i do actually have um at this point an endless amount of systems i need to build so uh, we're already laying out the next one here we got um plenty of videos coming up so subscribe if you haven't yet and uh with that said we'll see you guys on the next one